now to calculate the energy release in the fission process let us consider another kind of fission in which a neutron it bombards a uranium-235 nucleus and it forms molybdenum-98 and 136 genin along with the release of two neutrons so how much is the energy release in the process so we are given that the mass of uranium-235 is 235.0439 U. U here stands for atomic mass unit. The mass of a neutron is 1.0087 atomic mass unit U. Mass of molybdenum is 97.906 U and mass of genon is 135.9072 U. So this is a typical fission reaction. So how to find out the energy produced in this fission process of one nucleus of uranium-235. So what you, we need to do is we need to find out the total mass of the reactants on the left hand side. So total mass of the reactants. So in this case we have total mass of the reactants means in this case the, uh, the total mass of the uranium-235 and one neutron. So if we add this 235.0439U plus 1.0087U so that comes to around 236.0526 atomic mass unit U. This is the total mass of uranium-235 and a neutron. Similarly we need to find out the total mass of the products in this fission process. So the products here is the molybdenum nucleus, the genon nucleus and two neutrons. So sum total of this plus this plus two neutrons. Two times the mass of a neutron. So if we find out this total it comes to around you can do the totaling. So it will come to around 235 0.8306 U. So basically what it means there is a difference between the mass of the reactants and the products. So in this reaction, nuclear reaction that takes place, the mass of the products you can see is less than the mass of the reactants. So this difference of mass, mass can't just disappear. So what happens is this, that the difference of mass is released in the form of energy. So the mass difference between the reactants and the products, if we do it, it comes to around, so this is 0, this is 2, this is 2, again a 2, and of course this is 0, 0, 0. So this is this many U. So the mass difference between the react and the product, product reactants and the products in this case comes to around mass difference between the reactants and the products of this fission reaction it comes to around 0.222 U. So this amount of mass is converted into energy and released in this fission process. So how much is that energy? We know that 1 U of mass when converted into energy gives 931 point roughly 3 to 4 MeV of energy. So 1 U of mass when converted into energy gives us an amount of energy equal to 931 point 3 to 4 we can take it as 3 931.3 MeV of energy. So in this reaction, as, as we said, the mass difference is around 0.222 U. So this amount of mass is converted into energy and released in the process. So as the conversion, as I said, the conversion is 1 U of mass. When converted into energy, it gives around 931.3 MeV of energy. So in this case, the total amount of energy released in the fission of 1 nucleus of uranium-235 
is 0 0.222 U into 931.3 MeV that is equal to around 206.7 MeV of energy. So it basically means the fission of one nucleus of uranium-235 gives us an energy of around 206.7 MeV. This is a substantial amount of energy because if we have, say, we can actually calculate the amount of energy that is released by the fission of one mole of uranium-235. One mole of uranium-235 means 235 gram. 235 gram of uranium-235. Suppose we have 235 gram of uranium-235. That is one mole of uranium-235. Sorry, 235 gram of uranium-235. That is one mole of uranium-235 contains around Avogadro's number 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 atoms and hence nuclei. Right. So, we can find out the total amount of energy that will be released by the fission of just 235 grams of uranium 235. So, it will be this multiplied by this. So, that is a substantial amount of energy. So, this discovery proved that the nucleus has huge amount of energy at its disposal, which can be used for different purposes by mankind for different purposes. So, nuclear fission was a very important discovery in nuclear physics. So, the next topic that we'll talk about is the chain reaction. When we talk about nuclear fission, this is a very important concept that comes into play. That is the chain reaction. So, what we discuss is that in the fission process, a heavy nucleus, uranium nucleus, let's talk about uranium. The material that we use for fission and its studies, we call it the fissile material. The material which can undergo fission under the impact of energetic neutrons or other particles. This is the fissile material, material which can undergo fission. And uranium happens to be one which is energetically very viable in a sense, substantial amount of energy is released and it's available. So we talk about fission of uranium. So we are talking about the fission of uranium under the impact of neutrons. Say this is a fission of uranium-235 taking place that we are discussing. So in this process, it breaks up into two nuclei of barium and krypton that apart three neutrons are released in this process. Now let us say that we have a uranium, a fissile material in the form of uranium. A neutron comes and starts the fission process, induces fission in one uranium nucleus. In the process, three other neutrons will be produced. So this one we will call it the first generation. This is the primary neutron that is coming and inducing the fission process. And this is the second generation. First generation, second generation. So from the first fission process, the neutrons that are produced, these are called the secondary neutrons. So this is something we need to remember. So these are called the secondary neutrons. First neutron, which is coming and inducing the fission. And in the process, the nucleus is undergoing fission and it is producing these neutrons. These neutrons are called the secondary neutrons. So, if these secondary neutrons are such that it can induce fission in successive generations, then the fission chain reaction will keep on propagating in the fissile material till the whole of the fissile material is disintegrated. So this is what is known as a chain reaction. So what it basically means is fission chain reaction is a self-propagating process in which the number of neutrons will keep on multiplying. One neutron comes and strikes the first nucleus. It produces three other neutrons. 
we are not showing the dotted nuclei. So this neutrons again will cause fission in the second generation. So from each fission tree tree will be produced. So these are the secondary neutrons, successive neutrons in sec uh, successive stages that the neutrons are being produced. So the chain reaction, this is what is known as a chain reaction. It's a self-propagating nuclear fission process in which the number of neutrons produced goes on multiplying almost in geometrical uh, progression till the whole of the fissile material is disintegrated. So in the first generation we have one neutron, in the second generation we have three neutrons, in the third generation we have nine neutrons, then in the fourth generation again it will go like this. So what happens? The number of neutrons keeps on multiplying almost in geometric progression. So this will be again three from here, three from here, three from here. This side also it will be three, three, three here, three, three, three. So this is nine. So this will be 27. So you can see from one neutron in the which is inducing fission in the first generation in the first stage this is one it becomes three it becomes nine it becomes 27. So if the conditions are conducive enough such that the secondary neutrons produced can also induce fission in the successive generation then this fission process will keep on propagating. So this is what is known as a chain reaction and these secondary neutrons, neutrons which are produced because of initial fission, these are called the secondary neutrons, they are very very important as regards whether the chain reaction will keep on propagating or not. So what we are interested in is what are known as the secondary neutrons. So secondary neutrons are nothing but the neutrons which are produced as a result of fission in successive generations. These are known as the secondary neutrons. So this chain reaction, whether the rate of the reaction will be stable or whether it will keep on building up in successive generation or whether it will die out. It depends upon the capability of the secondary neutrons to cause fission in the successive generations. So in this case what we are considering that one neutron is coming and producing causing fission producing three neutrons. We are considering that all the three neutrons in the second generation can cause fission resulting in the production of nine neutrons. And again we are considering that all these 9 neutrons can cause fission in the third generation producing 27 neutrons and so on. But in reality this is not always true. Why? Because some of the neutrons they may just escape from the assembly from the nuclear fuel without causing fission. And uranium-235 if we consider it undergoes fission readily under the impact of comparatively slower neutrons and some of these neutrons may not be capable of causing fission in the successive generations. So whether the reaction will develop, whether the chain reaction will proceed till all of the fissile material is disintegrated or it will die out before that, it depends upon the capability of the secondary neutrons to cause fission in successive generation. So that is a very important concept. So we come to something called the multiplication factor. So what is the multiplication factor? We'll talk about it. So we talked about the concept of a chain reaction that is a fission reaction proceeding in a fissile material. Then we talked about the secondary neutrons. So what are these? These are the neutrons produced as a result of primary fission in successive generations. 
Then we talked about the importance of secondary neutrons. So if all the neutrons produced in successive generations can cause fission, then the nuclear chain reaction will proceed. Otherwise, the reaction will die out with time. So with that, we come to something called the multiplication factor. So what is the multiplication factor? It is defined as the number of neutrons is defined as the number of neutrons capable of causing fission capable of causing fission in one generation capable of causing fission in one generation ratio between the number of neutrons capable of causing fission in one generation to the number of neutrons capable of causing fusion in the previous generation immediately previous generation so what is multiplication factor it is the ratio between the number of neutrons capable of causing fusion in one generation to the number of neutrons capable of causing fusion or which cause fission in the previous generation. The example that we were considering is that one neutron, it comes and produces three neutrons. Three neutrons. We are considering all three are capable of causing fission. It produces nine neutrons and so on. One, three, nine. Then next days we are saying it produces 27, the example that we considered, and it goes on. So in this case, what happens if we consider this is the suppose the first generation and this is the second generation, this is the third generation neutrons and this is the fourth generation neutrons. So what is multiplication factor? Any generation if we consider, suppose we consider the third generation. So multiplication factor is denoted by the symbol K, usually by convention we denote the multiplication factor by k. So k is the ratio of the number of neutrons causing fission in any particular generation. Let us consider the third generation. What is the number of neutrons causing fission in the third generation? How many were produced? Capable of causing fission. Here we are considering that all are capable of causing fission. The number of neutrons that are there in the third generation which are capable of causing fission is 9. So immediately previous generation, what was the number of neutrons causing fission? It is 3. So this ratio, 9 by 3, here it is equal to 3. So in this case, even if we consider the fourth generation, 27, and the immediate previous generation, k, 27, immediate previous generation is 9. So that is equal to 3. So in this case, particular case, if we consider that the fission of uranium-235, three neutrons are produced, each of the three neutrons are capable of causing fission in the successive generations, then the multiplication factor for this reaction will be three. However, as we say, in reality, this does not happen. All three neutrons may not be capable or available for causing fission in the successive generations. Why? Because some of the neutrons may escape from the fissile material, some may be absorbed by in some non-fission reaction and so on. So actually the number of neutrons capable of causing fission in successive generations will not be exactly equal to 3. So whether the reaction proceeds till the whole of the fissile material is disintegrated or rather the nature of the chain reaction we can talk about the nature of the chain reaction of the chain reaction it depends on the multiplication factor So as we say, the nature of the chain reaction, it depends upon something called the multiplication factor, 
which gives us the relative number of neutrons capable of causing fission in successive generation compared to the previous generation. So depending on the value of K, that is the multiplication factor, chain reactions can be classified into three types. So for the first type of reaction, let us say K is equal to 1. That means what? The number of neutrons capable in, of causing fission in any generation, let me call it the nth generation, to the number of neutrons capable of causing fission in the n minus 1 generation is equal to 1. That simply means if 3 neutrons are causing fission in the nth generation, in the n minus 1 generation also 3 neutrons were causing fission. So in each generation, the number of co neutrons causing fission is same. So what happens in this kind of reactions? The reaction rate is stable. It remains constant. So these kind of reactions where k is equal to 1, the multiplication factor is equal to 1. These are called critical reactions. These are called critical this kind of chain reactions are called critical chain reactions. K is equal to 1. Other way around, if K is less than 1, that means what? In successive generations, the number of neutrons causing fissions are decreasing. So if 9 neutrons are causing fission in the 8th generation, in the 9th generation, some a number less than 9 neutrons will be causing fission. So what it means, in these kind of reactions for which the multiplication factor is less than 1, the number of neutrons causing fission in successive generation, it decreases. So that simply means that the rate of the reaction, fission chain reaction taking place, it decreases with time. The rate of the reaction decreases with time. So these reactions are called subcritical reactions. These are called subcritical and the final case, let us say k is greater than 1. If the multiplication factor is greater than 1, then the number of neutrons causing fission in successive generation, it increases from one generation to the other. That means the rate of reaction, it builds up with time. What we mean by rate of reaction means the number of fission taking place in successive generation it increases with time. So these reactions are known as supercritical. So if we want to use fission chain reaction as a source of energy, we need to control a fission chain reaction so that the energy released in the fission process can be trapped and used for different purposes particularly for power generation, what we need to do is we need to tame the, we can call it taming the, tame the nuclear fission chain reaction. If we leave it to itself, we'll have an atomic explosion like an atom bomb. It will just go out of hand. The rate of reaction will keep on building with time and it will be an explosion. So what we need to do is we need to control the rate of the fission chain reaction. How we can control? is by controlling the number of neutrons causing fission and in other words what we are doing is we are controlling the multiplication factor. So this is what is achieved, we will be talking about it, this is what is achieved in a nuclear reactor. What is a nuclear reactor? This is a device in which a nuclear fission chain reaction is allowed to proceed in a controlled manner. Nuclear reactor is a device, sorry, I was about to write the reactor. Nuclear reactor is a device in which a nuclear fission chain reaction is allowed to proceed in a controlled manner. How we can control the rate of the reaction? By controlling the number of neutrons causing fission in successive generation and hence controlling the multiplication factor k. 
So this is a very important concept in dealing with nuclear fission and fission chain reactions.